Hello and welcome to the Pangolin Laser System Safety Instructional Video for Beginners to Laser Safety. This video will cover the basics you need to know and understand to set up your first laser show safely and within the laws. And speaking of the laws, this video is based mainly off the laws in the United States. However, the United States of America has some of the most strict laws in the world, and if you follow these instructions, you are sure to be safe and legal in almost all countries. It is very important for you to check the local laws, however, and know what paperwork may be required. We only cover the actual on-site safety elements that you should be concerned with in this video. If you have questions or, and are a Pangolin customer, you can email compliance at pangolin.com and we can assist. Now, in the United States, the regulatory authority for all lasers of all types, including the laser show industry, is the FDA, specifically the CDRH, which stands for the Center for Devices and Radiological Health, which is a department of the FDA. This is who you get your variants from in the United States to operate lasers. Since lasers are technically a device that radiates, in our case light, they are the ones who manage it. Lastly, it's important to note that in the USA, there is an authority which can confiscate your equipment and give a fine up to $250,000. So even if safety isn't an incentive for you, there's also a financial incentive to follow the rules. Now that you've gotten that bit of legal stuff out of the way, let's take a look at our laser projector and go over the safety features included in our projector. Here we have a Quant Club Max 3000 for demonstration. All safety features on this projector are the same on all Quant laser systems, and this one has every piece of safety that exists in the industry. The first and foremost thing to note is the e-stop system. Here we have a mushroom switch, which is a contact closure stop for your projector system. This is run over a 3-pin XLR cable, which is easy to source and it locks. This goes from your projector to your e-stop. This can also be chained to other projectors this way, and you can even chain e-stops together this way. At the end of the line is your terminator, usually labeled user's interlock. Put this at the end of your e-stop chain to complete the system. On the e-stop switch, you also have an insert for your key, which needs to be put in and turned to enable. Lastly on the e-stop is the manual reset switch. Lasers in the United States are required to have a manual reset, where if the projector loses power, they will not start up automatically without instruction from the operator. This is a serious requirement in the United States, and if your projector does not have this, then it is not compliant. Now that our e-stop system is ready, let's plug it into the projector and go over the safety features of the projector itself. First, we have our key. Put it into the projector and turn to enable output. This is so only the proper operator can turn on the projector. You can input your e-stop system here and output to chain. On the front, we have our masking plate over the aperture glass. This can be used as a beam mask in basic scenarios, but it is a good idea to carry something like cinefoil in your workbox in case you need to mask the aperture in more complex ways especially if you ever side mount your projector. On the inside of the projector past the glass is a shutter right before the scanners. This moves into place if you press your e-stop switch, power off your projector, or even stop output in software like Beyond. This is a physical on-off switch to ensure that your laser can only emit when you intend for it to. This is also an active switch. When power is lost or data is lost, it defaults back to closed. Something that is important to your projector, which doesn't directly relate to safety, but is something to look out for, is the safety labels. First, on the front, you'll see the aperture label. It should be on or next to the laser aperture to show where lasers actually emit from the projector. Next, on the top of this projector, we'll see the logo type label, which explains all the output levels inside the projector and what wavelengths. Our last warning label on the side here explains the inside class 4 radiation is possible on the inside and when the interlocks are defeated on the inside. We'll look at those in a second. Also, you should see information about the projector variants and manufacturer information as well as the date of the manufacturer. Now what about those case interlocks? Well, if you have to open the projector for any reason to align or maintain, there'll be these interlocks here, which will cause the projector to power off when you remove the top. Once you are safe and ready, you can turn these over to reclose. Be sure to take them off when you're finished before putting the top of the case back on. Now let's discuss a couple extra features you may want to use or you may have added as an add-on to your projector. First is the Pangolin Pass hardware. This is a required piece of hardware for any crowd scanning laser in the United States. What this does is monitor the position of laser scanners and make automatic decisions about what is safe or not. A very easy way to see this in action is showing how Pass reacts to a fan of 20 beams versus 2. Since the power density of the two beams, Pass can tell it's probably not very safe and turns off the power for those points. This can be tuned to your exact specification as well, and is a big part of a safe crowd scanning show. There's a whole lot more to pass in crowd scanning, and we'll discuss that later in the video. 
The last extra safety feature on the projector is called Scan Guard on the FP4. This is a digital version of Pass, which can act as a very similar to Pass, but it's more of a convenience tool as it doesn't replace the need for Pass in crowd scanning. Now that we have covered all of the safety functions of our projector, let's rig the projector for your show. As for actual rigging, we follow the standard lighting protocols. One clamp is necessary, two doesn't hurt, and a safety cable through the eye hook. It's important to ensure that your truss is properly rigged. Whether it has the right hang points or is sandbagged to the floor properly, all the clamps and cables in the world won't stop the truss from coming down if it's rigged incorrectly. If you're going to sit at the projector on top of a surface like a truss, on a platform, be sure to strap the projector down like so, and use a safety cable through the eye hook. Now, where can we actually mount the projector? The standard rules are 3 meters off of the floor where public can access, and 2.5 meters to the side where the public can access. In most places, performers and staff are exempt from this rule given proper safety protocols. But there are a few exceptions. Check with local governments or local laser safety officers for those exceptions. As well, be sure your rough beam path stays within those 3 meters and 2.5 meter ranges. And where will our path end? Well, let's cover that now. Similar to the standard rules for where you can project where your projectors can be, zones also need to be 3 meters from the floor and 2.5 meters from the sides of where people can access. As well, the operator must be able to see all termination points from where they operate and where the e-stop is. Obviously, there are a few exceptions to these rules, but let's take a quick look at a few examples. In this club, we have a fairly low ceiling, so we can be sure we can go into the ceiling all the way to the back, but we want to make sure that we don't go lower and break the 3 meter rule. An easy way to guess if you don't have the measurements is to be above exit signs. These are usually around 9 feet from the floor, depending, and usually safe bet. In this theater, we have some more options. We can do all of the ceiling, we can do all of the areas of the walls, and here is one of those exceptions. We can actually do the balcony edges. While it's best to use as little as you can, balconies already have barriers that restrict access, and you can use them for zoning. Be sure that you can see all the balcony edges from where you operate and where you have your e-stop. Lastly, let's look at an, arena, at an arena stage. Here we have lots of space, and thus we have lots of options. Again, the ceiling, just be aware of catwalks, back walls, sides, and balcony edges. Note, in big rooms like this, any small movement on your projector can make your zones move exponentially long distances, so we prefer to ratchet down your projectors and monitor output during the show. One extra thing we can do with all this space is comfortably do a zone on the downstage edge. This highlights an exemption we discussed before, which is where performers are allowed to be scanned in these areas as long as they are informed about the scanning and are aware of the potential hazard. And no local laws prohibit this type of scanning. One last thing we should keep in mind before we zone is lasers are high intensity light and can potentially set fire to flammable materials. Make sure all of your termination points are able to handle the energy without ignition. For example, don't terminate against drape. Now we can actually set up our zones in software. In this case, we'll do an overhead zone and a downstage zone we will do this pretty briefly as there are a separate set of videos that come with your projector or are available online. In QuickShow, same and beyond, you will connect your lasers and they should pop up as so. Make sure you see all of the ones you've connected. Then we can go to zones. I like to make brand new zone file for each show I do, so we'll remove all the zones and add what we would like. Left up, right up, left down, and right down. From there, we can bring the brightness all the way down and do a geometric correction we guess is correct. For the overhead ones, I like to make them small like so and bring them all the way up. From there, we enable a zone and slowly bring up the brightness until we just barely see the laser output from one of the projectors. This will let us know if we are using the correct projector. You can swap which projector this zone goes to here and find which you would like to use. For the down zones, I'll do the size similar but bring it all the way down. Once projectors are assigned correctly to zones, we can start to zone for sure. Enable only the zone you're currently working on and bring the brightness up just enough so you can see the grid. From there, we'll geometrically put the zone into place. Do this for all of your projectors. Once we are happy, we can check that the zones satisfy the rules and save our setup. 
When zoning is done, we should mask off the projectors within those zones. Run your zones at a low brightness, and you can mask off your zones using either the plates on the projector or using cinefoil, like so. Now what if your projector is up in the air 40 feet? Well, in this case, the rules are mask if physically possible. We don't want to make the zones unsafe trying to mask them. Now is a great time to go through your safety checklist. If you got a variance through Pangolin, we have included this safety checklist. You're required to go through this each show and sign off to be sure of safe operation. Fill out your name, the venue and show, and go down the list here. Once you complete, you can sign off at the bottom. It's a good idea to get a second pair of eyes on the checklist to be sure everything is completed properly. Once all of that com is complete, your setup is done and you're ready to operate your show. Some things to keep in mind as you run your show though. First, as an operator, it is your responsibility to make sure you see all laser termination points from where you're operating. Usually this is not a problem if you're at front of house during your show. Second, you need to make sure you know where your content is going. If you're running your show from beyond, your content needs to be told where to go. And if you have zones that are safer than others, you don't want to accidentally have content going to dangerous areas. If you're running your show from a console, you're usually selecting zones first before content, so you should be okay in this case. And third, a safe operator is always ready to press the e-stop in case of a mechanical failure. Follow these steps and you are certain to have a safe and compliant show. Let's talk about a few extra things to round this all out. Now what if you want to do an outdoor show? Well, setup is very similar. Same rules about distances and zones. But there are two things you need to consider. First being that you must not shoot lasers into the sky. Your show must be terminated. This means that all laser output must be terminated on buildings, trees, or mountainsides. And no laser radiation must enter airspace above 400 feet in the air. Second being that you must not operate within 5 miles of an airport for obvious reasons. It is important to note both of these rules can be overcome for specific shows, However, there is a process with the FAA to do this legally and it requires a bit of extra paperwork and a few months' notice. Finally, let's talk about the elephant in the room, crowd scanning. Despite common beliefs, it is possible to become legally allowed to crowd scan in the United States. Obviously, however, it takes several steps, including pass integration into your projectors, lenses to control laser divergence, measuring output on site for later shows, as well as getting a special variance with the FDA, getting yourself trained as a laser safety officer, and more. Basically, if this video is your first introduction to laser safety, you are not going to have the skills and certifications needed to do crowd scanning safely and legally. However, there is hope. If you go through the proper training and take care of the paperwork and get your right equipment, it is completely possible to crowd scan legally and safely in the United States. Now let's do a quick review. The projector has many safety systems, including the e-stop system with key, interlock, and manual reset. On the projector, it has a key, beam block, and shutter, we must mount our projectors securely and use safety cables. We must make sure our zones are in safe areas, mainly 3 meters from the floor and 2.5 meters from the sides of all accessible areas. We need to mask off as much of the projector as we can for areas we didn't zone. And finally, while operating, we must keep watch, monitor, and be ready to press the e-stop if a problem arises. If you follow these steps, you are well on your way to creating safe and beautiful laser displays. We want to thank you greatly for taking the time to watch this video and making it through. By doing so, you are improving the quality and safety of the industry we love so much and helping it grow in a great way. If you'd like to take a test on your knowledge, we have a test you can take by going to pangotest.com. And if you are getting your variants from Pangolin, please take this test and let us know how you did by emailing your results to compliance at pangolin.com. As well, the information that has made it into this video has come from the legal documentation itself and the input from professionals in the industry, with editorial review from John Ward, Bill Benner, and myself, Lyra Letourneau.